Hey there again, it's Dusty Thunder with another AITA story for you. This one is, am I the ass cannot for confronting my friend for taking our picture out of his wallet to replace it with his girlfriend's? My 22 female best friend, John, 23 male, and I have been friends since we were kids. As kids, we were very close and we had a fake wedding when we were seven and eight. In high school, we recreated the fake wedding pics and he had one of those pics in his wallet. Since he got with his girlfriend, Dinah, 23 female, around two years ago, John has distanced himself from me. We still still hang out, but I feel like he always makes time for Dinah first instead of me. Can't imagine why that is. The only way I can see him now is if we go grab coffee once every few days, but other than that, he won't come to my house when we used to have sleepovers and movie nights and won't invite me to his house either. I feel neglected and hurt because we've been inseparable since we were small kids. A couple of days ago, I grabbed coffee with him at a coffee shop, and when he opened his wallet to grab his card and pay, I noticed he had put a pic of him and Dinah in the place he had our fake wedding pic. I asked him about it and pointed out how I noticed, to which the only thing he said was, what about it? I was like, really? Why did you have to take our picture out and replace it with him and Dinah? He said Dinah is his girlfriend, and he doesn't understand why I'm making such a big deal about it. I reminded him she might be his girlfriend, but he can't just throw me away. I've been his best friend since primary school. My pick existed in his wallet first, and he throws it away to replace me with someone he knows significantly less. He got annoyed and told me that once I stop being an immature, annoying brat, he'll talk to me again. Until then, I better leave him to his peace because he's not dealing with my childish tantrum. Am I the astronaut here? Interesting. Okay, as a reminder, she is a 22-year-old female. He's a 23-year-old male. They've been friends since they were seven and eight and now he has a girlfriend that he's had for two years and he's been distancing himself okay so they're young they're young they're young they're young 22 and 23 is young especially when trying to figure out navigating friendships and relationships and friendships between a male and a female when someone starts dating someone is always tricky maybe they are strictly friends maybe that really is the case however OP has to understand here that as he starts dating people, those girls aren't going to be okay with him having a bestie that's a girl. And sleepovers? That ain't going to happen no more. And there are several reasons for us. The first of which that comes to the surface is, is jealousy driven by insecurity, right? And that if she wants to remain close friends with him, she's going to have to make sure that she puts an effort forth to become friends with whomever he's dating so that they are comfortable with her being in his life. But there will still be boundaries. Like the sleepover thing, that ain't happening. And I can imagine how his girlfriend, you know, when he opens his wallet and there's a picture of him with another girl in there, it's like, oh, who's this bitch? And if they've never met, it doesn't say they've ever met. She hasn't made any effort to meet Dinah. They've been together for two years. You would think that if they were that close, she would be like, hey, I'd like to meet her. Let's the three of us hang out. I really want her to be more comfortable with me so you and I can keep being friends. Instead, she just gets salty and points all of her ire at him. And of course, He's 23. He doesn't have the life experience to be like, okay, here's what's happening and here's how we can navigate it. He's just like, it's not a big deal. Quit being immature. And how she's handling it is immature. How he is handling it is immature as well. This is almost an everyone sucks here because there is a way for them to still be friends. They're just not executing it at all. They're just kind of leaving themselves stuck and getting pissed at each other. So that's cool. That's going to lead to good things all over the place. She just happened to notice whenever he was going to pay for something. She just happened to notice that his picture had changed out there. I'm sure she was looking for it. I'm sure she was like, okay, if that picture ever gets replaced, that's how I know. That's how I know that he's done with me. She was looking. She was definitely looking. Why hasn't he introduced her to his girlfriend? Also, why hasn't she made the effort to want to meet the girlfriend? And the only thing that I can think of that would prevent her from wanting to do that is if she had feelings about him. If she has feelings about him, then she's going to act exactly how she's acting right now, right? If she is just a friend, then you would think that she would make some kind of effort to retain this friendship instead of just getting pissed at him and try to find a solution to it. But that's not what she's doing at all. So... Let's talk about where she is on the scale here. As a reminder, the ASCON scale operates like the U.S. military's DEFCON scale. ASCON 1 is the worst. ASCON 4 is the least severe asshole. And 4 is you could have done it differently. 3 is you should have done that differently. 2 is you definitely shouldn't have done it. And ASCON 1 is you're a terrible human being. So, where do we think OP lives here? Definitely checks the box for four. She could have done it differently. Uh, On three, should have done it differently. There are so many options for things that she should have done differently. She definitely checks the box there. Is she a two? She definitely shouldn't have done what she's done here. So I think we can safely say here that as a two, there are 
plenty of things that she definitely shouldn't have done in here. If she wants to be friends and remain friends with this guy, she definitely shouldn't have done what she's done because she's making it seem like she's got feelings for him. And he knows that. And he's going to continue to distance himself. He reacted the way that he reacted, probably reacting to the fact that he thinks that she has feelings. And also Dinah throughout all of this is probably trying to convince him. She's like, bro, she's in love with you. Of course you can't have a sleepover with her. Of course I don't want you hanging out with her. Of course I don't want your picture together in your wallet. Of course not. She's in love with you, dude. Wake up. And if she had that conversation with him, probably said, look, go have coffee with her. Replace the picture in your wallet. Let her see it. See how she reacts. If she reacts like this, she's in love with you. If she reacts like this, maybe you're just friends. She reacted the way that she reacted. So... We're going. Going on a trip. Just the two of us. Solo trip to Ascon 1 here. One way ticket for one. Table for one at Ascon 2, please. Tonight's menu has lonely assholes. It's not a sleepover if you're all by yourself. It's just sleep. Sorry, lady. If you really want to be friends and remain friends with this guy, you're going to have to figure out how to navigate his relationships with women because that's going to happen again in his life. Maybe he marries this girl and you're not off to a good start with her. So you better hope this relationship ends and you get a fresh start with whoever he starts dating next. These kinds of friendships are very possible, but they have to be handled very maturely. And insecurity on his partner's part will squash them immediately. So it's like 87 things have to go right in order for this to happen. You are one of those things, or you probably have 85 of those things that have to go right and did none of them here. So a lot of change is needed or you're in love with this guy and uh, you either don't know it or you're in denial. So he didn't handle it well either. Let's go ahead and revise that. Let's revise this to... And everyone sucks here. Yes, she's an ass con too, but also everyone sucks here. Because if he wants to be friends with her, the same rules apply. He's got to make sure that his partner is comfortable with her. And that requires more than just going to grab coffee with his female bestie that he probably didn't tell Dinah about. It takes work. It doesn't seem like either one of them are willing to do it. They just want to bitch about it. Good luck. <laughs> Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another AITA story for you. This one is, am I the astronaut for telling my daughter that she's too old for us to be doing daddy-daughter date nights anymore? I feel like my blood pressure is going to rise during reading this one. I have six daughters, 16, 13, 9, 6, 4, and 4. Whoa. The 16-year-old and 13-year-old are from my first marriage. Money has been pretty tight for the past few years, but I think the cutoff for daddy-daughter date nights should be like 12 or 13 anyway. I took the 13-year-old on a date night a few months back and told her that this would be the last date night and she hasn't spoken to me since. The 16-year-old called me recently to tell me that she had gotten her driver's license and also a job as a ride operator at an amusement park. She said that she wanted to take me out to a daddy-daughter night, which included us going to the amusement park where she worked. I love rides, and because she works there, she gets to go on all of the rides for free. I told her that her half-sisters would love to come, and she said, um... Maybe they can come another time, but I kind of wanted this night to be just the two of us. I told her that I appreciated the offer, but she was too old to be doing daddy-daughter nights alone anymore. Bro, what are you doing? She now has younger sisters, and it's their turn for me to spend time with them. There it is. The blood pressure. She said, okay, and hung up pretty abruptly. I thought that was over and that she understood. But then my ex-wife called me, demanding to know what I said to our daughter because she had been in her room crying for hours now. I told her that our daughter wanted to take me out on a date night, but I thought she was too old for that. She said that I was an asshole and that she was going to tell everybody that I was an asshole if I didn't accept our daughter's offer. I again refused and she made a rant on her social media and sent me the screenshots of all the people commenting that I was an asshole and that it's never too old to go on a date night. I agree. Between spouses, I take my wife out to date nights, but at some point between a parent and a child, it just gets weird. Grabbing a quick lunch together when they're adults is one thing, but having a whole date night when they're teenagers is a different story. They need to be independent. Go hang out with your friends not with your father. Dude, what are you doing? So am I the asshole or do you guys understand what I'm saying? My ex-wife's screenshots are obviously biased, so I decided to come here instead of posting a rant on my social media and making it a public spectacle for our whole family to see. Yes, you're a f***ing asshole. What the...
Okay, I have daughters. You, sir, are a brozo, dumbass, asshole supreme. Candy Thunder, who knew I'd be fired up by this story, left some notes at the end because it fired her up as well. <laughs> Candy's notes. Because this post fires me up, insert angry emoji. The word date does not need to be romanticized. It can simply mean social engagement. You can have a date with anyone, a friend, colleague, parent, child, a spouse, a partner, etc. It does not have to be romantic. This to me sounds like dad and his current wife made it an issue about him spending time with his children from his previous marriage or made it into something weird. He turned down spending alone time with his daughter because she's too old. That's the only weird part of this story. His daughters are in need of parental attention from their father and he basically says they are too old effing ASCON one yeah yeah we can get there in a hurry we'll go ahead and just get this thing out of the way now because you sir are most definitely an ASCON one here's the kicker there's a price there's a price for being an ASCON one in this situation and that price is going to be a lifetime of regret dude you don't understand somehow but when your kids want to spend time with you, you freaking snatch it up and you enjoy every effing second of it because that will not last forever. And when you have teenage girls who want, when your daughters are teenage girls and they actually want to spend time with you, you know how many parents with teenage kids are like, I would love for my kid to want to spend time with me. They can't stand being in the same room as me. They think I'm an idiot. You have children who actually want to spend time with you. The whole date part of this, I don't know where where he's romanticizing this or turning it into some kind of weird date that was never the purpose of a daddy-daughter date, dude. It was so you could spend time with your child. You made it weird. You're the only person on the planet who has made this weird, and it is going to cost you dearly because someday, someday, sooner rather than later now, because you're an idiot, your kids aren't going to want to spend time with you. They're going to actively choose to not spend time with you like you've done to them, and you're going to regret not taking up every opportunity. To spend some time with them alone. Mm. And alone time whenever your kids are teenagers is super important because when you're in the busy bustling life, you're going from point A to point B. They may be talking your ear off, but they're talking about stuff that's going on with their lives right then or that's on their mind right then. When you can get them alone and get them to relax and open up to you and actually talk about some issues that are deeper, you're not going to get that opportunity otherwise. You won't. Having some time with them to work on your relationship, strengthen your bond, hear them out, be able to hear, you know, what really is on their mind right now, what they're struggling with, what they need your help with, or to just have fun and spend some time together and remember what it was like to be able to spend some time with your kid without them worrying about all the things that they have to worry about as a teenage girl. Now you are missing so many opportunities because Either you just can't see the forest for the trees here, or you can't see past your own face, or because your current wife has made it an issue for you. And Candy Thunder may be right. It may be that his current partner has made it an issue with him seeing his kids from his previous marriage. And if that's the case, she's an ass con one too. And really, if she sees this happening and isn't speaking up and saying, you're an idiot, spend time with her. She's an ass con one. If she's complicit in this in any way, shape, or form, she's an ass con one too. The pain this guy is going to experience at some point when that regret sets in and whenever he realized how bad he screwed this up is going to be punishment enough. So I just can't imagine being so short-sighted and making this decision and knowing that it upsets your kids, knowing that you have a 16-year-old daughter who is crying for hours because you said no to this and still, still sticking to your guns. I'm going to send you to ask on one again. Dude. What a dick of a dad. (laughs) I love the end of this too. He's like, uh, yeah, so I came to post here instead of what my wife did on Facebook. And and that's clearly biased. So you guys get it, right? No, no, dude. It doesn't matter where you post this. You're the asshole no matter where this goes. Unless you like pay people off to respond the way that you want them to respond. Nobody sees this the way that you see this, dude. Nobody. I think 13 is the cutoff age. It's like, I can't have a relationship with you after you turn 13. That's that's the time. That's the cutoff time. Dumb a.
ass. His daughter's literally heartbroken and he's just like, yeah, it's, but it's weird, right? No. The only thing weird is that you're making it weird, dude. The spending time with your kids is not weird if you have teenagers period who want to spend time with you you freaking take you take them up on that offer never ever 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 turn that down you make time for it the bond between parent and kids is is delicate right it's delicate in ways that it's easy to screw up but it's also one of the most resilient bonds there can be because i think kids and parents can be more forgiving of each other than anyone else more forgiving than a spouse more forgiving than an acquaintance but it's also really easy to screw up Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another AITA story for you. This one is, am I the ass cannot for not giving my sister-in-law and her family a luxury vacation? Apparently we're in the wrong family, Candy Thunder. I travel a lot for work, so I have so many hotel and airline points, it is crazy. This summer, I am taking my family to Disney World. We're going to stay at one of those resorts on the property. My sister-in-law and her family had a hard time during the pandemic, so I decided to do something nice and invite them along. My treat. I said I would pay for their flights, hotel, and park tickets. Everyone was excited until she started talking to my wife. Now she is upset that we are staying at one of the resorts and they have to stay in Disney Springs. Apparently, I'm being cheap by using points for the hotel instead of just paying for them to stay at the same resort as us. My wife told her sister and brother-in-law to shut the f*** up and accept the gift, but they didn't. They told my in-laws that I was making their kids jealous by not letting them enjoy the same stuff as us. To be clear, the hotel I booked for them is very nice. It's just not the Grand Floridian. So I finally talked to them and gave them the choice of accepting my gift or not coming since I could still cancel their reservations. They started yelling at me for being an asshole and taking something away from their children. I had talked to them like adults, but when they started screaming, their kids heard them and found out that they might not be going. Now their kids are pissed at their parents for possibly effing up their vacation. And I'm the bigger asshole for making them look bad in front of their kids. Am I the asshole? Wow. Holy entitlement, Batman. I, I was too I was too in shock to hit that button when I should have hit that button and had those red flags flying. But a holy entitlement to Batman. Wow. You ever been to Disney Springs? It's freaking gorgeous. It is beautiful and it has everything you could ever want right there. How dare you give me a free trip to Disney and free hotel in Disney Springs. I want to be on the property in the penthouse for free. Cheapskate. What? I don't understand people like this. I don't. I just don't. What in their internal wiring would be like, you know what? I'm not going to be thankful. I'm going to be an asshole. I feel like I should get more. I feel like the people who are paying for all of this, I feel like I should get the exact same shit as them. Maybe more. Why? Because I'm entitled to it. Why wouldn't I be? How dare you talk about taking something away from our kids? Okay, so let me get this straight. You guys can get something for free. You can be complete asshats about it and treat the person who's doing this overly nice thing for you just like complete shit. And then whenever they actually draw a boundary and defend themselves, they are the devil for talking about taking something away from your kids. It's not your shithead ad attitude that is risking this for the kids it's it's the person with boundaries i don't even know where to start there's no logic to be had with these folks here this has to be just the way they are this just has to be the way they are about everything which means that their kids are used to this hopefully the kids are old enough to know that their parents are asshats and that their parents are entitled and that their parents should be thankful but instead are screwing all this up for them and they're directing their ire at the parents Hopefully that's the case. However, if their parents are like this, they're probably like this all the time and have been for a long time and the kids are just used to it and they think that's just the way things work. So they're going to grow up just as entitled and just completely just like this. Nobody likes those people. Nobody likes those people at all. Okay, so the question here was, am I the ass cannot for not giving my sister-in-law and her family a luxury vacation? Hell no, OP. Hell no. Here's the kicker. You did. You gave them a luxury vacation. Which you did. The question should be, am I the asshole for not giving my sister-in-law and her family a luxury vacation and also pay additional so that they can get the exact same shit that I'm getting? Because that's what's really going on here. Opie is paying for their flights, hotel, and park tickets. But they want to be staying at the Grand Floridian instead of at Disney Springs. Screw you! 
sleep in your car, sleep in the rental car, which I'm sure that OP is covering here as well. So no matter where you sleep, OP is paying for it. Just be thankful and shut the fuck up. How about that? They're going to get to Disney and Mickey Mouse is going to slap a bitch. Mickey Mouse is going to hear about this and be like, oh boy, you're a real asshole. Bap! Kick him out of the park. I just, I just, I just, I'm befuddled. I'm befuddled. They don't want their kids to think that they're not able to, to provide them with the same experience that everyone else is getting. Even though they're not, clearly they're getting it all for free. So if they want the upgrade, they can pay for the freaking upgrade. How about them apples? Yeah, they need to be thankful. They're just not. Now their kids are pissed at their parents for possibly f***ing up their vacation. That is a signal to me that they're old enough to know what's going on here. Or maybe they just know that their parents are entitled asshats because someone else has explained it to them. This is not okay. This is absolutely not okay. No, you're not the asshole, OP. Um, I wouldn't take them. Or offer to take the kids, but not the parents. Because these people are going to be absolute shitheads for this entire vacation. Absolute shitheads. What happens when you're at dinner? Are you going to have to pay for them to have the best of the best of the best of everything everywhere you go? Or you're an asshole? I legitimately would be seeking to find a way to let the kids come, but have their parents stay behind. Screw them. I'm not going to ruin this time because they're entitled asshats. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another AITA story for you. This one is Am I the Askinaut for having my niece's dress photoshopped because she wore white to my wedding? So I-30 female got married. Yay! Honestly, it was my dream wedding. Everything went off without a hitch, except for one small thing. My niece's 16 dress. It was a white, lacy, knee-length dress. She even wore lace elbow-length gloves. Honestly, it looked just like a wedding dress. I didn't say anything to her or her parents, my brother and sister-in-law, at the moment, and I tried my best to ignore it. But when I got the first drafts back from our photographer, I couldn't stand when I saw her in her white dress standing next to me. My husband saw how upset I was and suggested that we pay extra to get my niece's dress photoshopped to a light blue. We thought it through, and since we had some budget left, we went for it. Well, last week, we got the final photos back and they looked great. I could hardly even tell that my niece was originally wearing white and she still looked really nice. I posted some of the photos on social media and my sister-in-law messaged me and was angry that I photoshopped my niece without checking with her. My sister-in-law first. She accused me of thinking my niece was ugly and of body shaming her. To be clear, I did not have her body photoshopped, only the color of her dress and gloves. I don't think I'm in the wrong, but the situation has been stressing me out, so am I the asshole? Edit, small clarification, the picture I posted was a large group shot that my niece is in. I wasn't trying to showcase the photoshop at all. Candy Thunder included a couple of the top comments for us here. Number one, sister-in-law is ticked. She's probably the one who helped pick the dress and gloves out and encouraged this. Niece may not know. Doubtful at her age in 2023, but sister-in-law did. Number two. And in response to comment above, exactly this. Sister-in-law knew that she couldn't wear a white dress to upstage OP without getting side eyes, so she had her 16-year-old daughter wear it so they could plead ignorance. She knows exactly why her daughter's dress was photoshopped, and she's going to pretend like she thinks it was her daughter who was photoshopped so that she can pick the fight she always wanted. Wow. Is that how people's brains operate? I really want to wear white to the wedding, but I can't. But my girl can, my 16-year-old girl. Hmm, yes. It's a brilliant plan. I'll have her wear white lazy things and we'll send her to the wedding. There's no way they'll ever bitch about that. <laughs> what the f*** is wrong with people, bro? What is wrong with people? Why is this even a thing? Why was this? Why? 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 Sorry, that was loud. But why? Come on. Why? Also, yeah, it's their freaking pictures. They paid for it. It's their wedding. They can do whatever the hell they want. They could put a freaking clown costume on everyone in that picture and no one can say a damn thing. They might, but it's their picture. They paid for it. Turning it into body shaming and saying that she was ugly was really taking the full-time victim role, just gung ho in it there and just basically saying, I'm going to use whatever I can use to try to victimize myself here and make you seem like the asshole. Even though it was my maniacal plot here to have her wear the white dress. Mm. It's common knowledge not to wear a white dress, unless you're the bride. 
right? It's common knowledge not to do that. And if you do, come what may. So either this was something maniacal that she did intentionally with malice or it was ignorance. But either way, it doesn't matter. She has the right to Photoshop whatever the F she wants to Photoshop. And she didn't even Photoshop the texture of the dress. It was just the tint, the color. I'm a photographer. I know what she did. I know how the photographer did it right now. And it's it's an easy thing to do. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't require altering the appearance or shape of anything. It is simply coloring, simply changing the color. I don't get it. I don't get how they try to sabotage. Sabotage? I'd like to take this moment to... Uh to talk about some of the new swag we have available here. Uh, this is not a final, final design, but it is available for sale right now. It's words are hard. Seems timely, doesn't it? Okay, we'll go back to this. Good gravy. I do not understand how how people can be just backstabbing to each other. Okay, it was Mary Beth. When women want to be evil, conniving biatches, they can outdo the devil himself. I just don't get it. I know why. Why? Okay. There are so many more things that if I had the time and energy to do in a day, I would do just to think that someone would spend time and energy doing that on purpose blows my mind. I just don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. Like what to what end? What is she hoping to accomplish here? Just pulling one over on someone and that's the ultimate goal of the day. Woohoo! <laughs> Get a f***ing life. Ah! I just don't understand. I feel for you, lady, I do, because I just, I don't, I don't get it. And if I had to live in a world where that shit was going on all the time, I would lose my effing mind. I would absolutely lose my mind. I will never get it. I will never, ever, 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 ever get it or condone it or be okay with it. I will fight it tooth and nail, but I also don't see it. And Candy Thunder is really good about pointing out when that kind of shit is going on whenever I'm just oblivious to it. She's like, here's what's happening. I'm like, why? Why can't people just be happy for each other? Why are people so broken? Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another AITA story for you. This one is, am I the astronaut for canceling the entire vacation when I found out that my stepdaughters deliberately hid my daughter's passport to get her to stay home? What? Okay. I've been married to my wife, Beth, for five years. I have a bio daughter named Jessica. She's 18. And I also have two stepdaughters named Monica and Lee. They're 25 and 28. Both are single moms and live with us currently. There's been issues about my stepdaughters asking my daughter to babysit the kids. Jessica didn't have a problem with it at first since this is what she does to earn money. But since her stepsisters don't pay her much, she just refused to babysit. We worked this out by having my wife take care of paying for the babysitting. I planned a family vacation for three days and everyone wanted to go. However, both Monica and Lee suggested that Jessica stay home and watch the kids since Beth doesn't want her grandkids to come. They said it's because the kids are used to Jessica and hiring another babysitter would cause issues and also said that Jessica isn't too fond of our destination, but it was obvious that Jessica wanted to go. They insisted and Beth offered to pay her double and there was just... A lot of back and forth on this until I demanded that they stop bringing it up. We were supposed to go last week, but when everybody had bagged their bags and was time to go, Jessica found out that she didn't have her passport on her. We searched her bag and then went home and searched there. Beth and my stepdaughters kept insisting that we go back to the airport or else we'd miss our flight. They insisted that Jessica stay at home with the kids. They even told the new babysitter to go home because she was no longer needed. I refused to go and kept searching for the passport till Monica admitted that she helped Lee hide Jessica's passport to get her to stay home with the kids. What the f*** is happening in the world today? I do not understand. I was livid. I tried to get her to tell me where it was, but she said Lee had it. Lee denied, so I threatened to cancel the vacation. That's when they gave it back. I decided to actually cancel the vacation and blew up at both of them and berated them. They stayed upstairs for a while, and Beth refused to speak to me and said that I punished my stepdaughters for worrying about their kids and wanting them to stay with somebody they know. I got told I overreacted and ruined the trip for everybody. Editing to mention that kicking my stepdaughters out isn't possible since my wife co owned the house that we currently live in. Dude, you have gotten yourself into some kind of situation that is hell. Okay, everything you need to know is that your wife, Beth, refused to speak to you and said that, that you were punishing your stepdaughters for worrying about their kids and wanting them to stay with someone they know. She condoned what they did. This is legit Cinderella, but you're still alive, Dad. How is this Cinderella bullshit still happening while you're there? 
Grr. Cinderella, the story, only happened because her dad was gone. You're here. How are you allowing this bullshit to continue? How are you still married to this woman when she is treating your daughter like this? Also, how the f are the three daughters in this story, 18, that's his daughter, the one who's Cinderella, the stepdaughters are 25 and 28. Both are single moms and live with them. He pays for the babysitting. He's paying for the vacation. And they sabotaged his daughter so that she would have to stay home and watch the kids. It wasn't about the kids. It was never about the kids. It was they didn't want her to go. But it doesn't effing matter. Here's the shit part. OP, you may think that you've drawn a line, done some good here by canceling the vacation. It's not enough, dude. It is not enough. The vacation got canceled for everybody. I think what you discovered here is that your wife had something to do with them hiding this shit because she stuck up for them whenever you got pissed off and because she wasn't flabbergasted, because she wasn't pissed off, because she wasn't surprised. I think you can safely say that she was in on this. And if she is willing to do this to your child, how the f are you still married to this woman? Screw the house. Who gives a shit? Why would you allow your child to be treated like that? Also, I think you just got a clear picture of who you're married to and what she's okay with. Is this okay? Is this what you want? Is this what you want from your life? Have you just given up and said, I guess this is what I deserve? Cool. That's you. Is this what your daughter deserves? She's 18, so let's hope like hell she can get out of there as fast as possible. But guess what? When she does finally leave, she's never coming back. You will never have a relationship with your daughter because she doesn't want to come back and relive the Cinderella hell. Cinderella, the story would have never happened if her father was still alive. But you're letting it. Dude. What is happening? The question here is, am I the asshole for canceling the entire vacation when I found out that my stepdaughters deliberately hid my daughter's passport to get her to stay home? No, you're not the asshole for that. You're the asshole for not doing more. Let's talk about this for a second. Okay, so we're ignoring the initial question that he's asking right now because he's not the asshole for that. The question right now is, how big of an asshole is he for not doing more? He could have done it differently, should have done it differently, definitely shouldn't have done that, or he's a terrible human. He needs a, a daddy-daughter vacation. And uh, while you're gone, tell Beth and her evil stepdaughters to move the F out. Or you can move out, and that can be the daddy-daughter vacation. This is jacked. I don't know that he's a terrible human. Well, hell, you let your kid be treated like this and you're okay with it? I mean, he, he got pissed he berated them canceled the vacation but at this point he needs to do a hell of a lot more if this is not the first time something like this has happened and this is just more of the same and he's allowing it to continue i'm saying he's ask on one for letting this happen he's ask on one for letting it get to this point it's a shit thing to do maybe he feels powerless because he's married to beth there's a thousand reasons that this could happen it doesn't make it okay though none of it makes it okay none of it dad you're you're an ask on one for not doing more and for letting it get to this point draw a line it doesn't matter if jessica wasn't your bio daughter the fact that they're willing to do this to another human period and treat them like this means that you have an obligation to step up and end it this whole family is learning from you right now. And Beth. But we know where Beth stands. And Beth's okay with them doing whatever or was in on it. So it's up to you to be a moral leader here and to actually like light a path. And you're not doing that right now. I mean, you punished everyone by canceling the trip. And it's a good thing because this trip would have been garbage. But you have to do more. You have to be a moral leader here too. And I don't know how the hell it got to this point. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again, and I have another Reddit story for you. This one is a best of Redditor update, and it's going to be a long one, probably a two-parter. This is caught mother-in-law snooping on security cameras, husband furious with me for wanting to press charges. Oh, this one sounds juicy. To preface this, I just wanted to let it be known that yes, I know I overdo it with the camera system a bit. I have a ring doorbell along with the mini cameras in the living room, kitchen, and mine and my husband's bedroom. He knows about all the cameras, let's make that clear. He knows they are there, and he is okay with it. You see, about three years before we got together, have been together for five years now, I was at my apartment living by myself. 
Long story short, someone broke in. I tried to fight back and got the shit beat out of me and had all of my prized possessions stolen. Damn! I was in the hospital for a few days. The guy was never caught and ever since I have a lot of anxiety, hence the cameras now. Yeah, that's understandable. I am in therapy and have been for two years now and I am doing better. The cameras are a security blanket and my therapist thinks they are fine as they will help me feel better without being intrusive. Anyway, on to what happened. My husband and I are staunchly child free and his mother hates that. She brought it up for years and we told her no every time. I thought she finally had given up on the idea, but I guess not. My husband and I were at work when I got a notification from Ring on my phone. My mother-in-law was at our house and she had a spare key. I didn't give her one, that's for sure, to get in. She was supposed to be gone in another state visiting her sister, so I was confused and decided to check the inside cameras later. I get home before my husband, so I sat down and checked the living room video to see she went towards the back rooms. I pull up the bedroom camera and find her snooping through our stuff. Important to note, we used to use condoms and BC pills, but then I switched to an IUD. We still use condoms. The switch was recent, so I still had my old BC pills in my nightstand. I see her shuffle around in my nightstand and pull out my birth control pill case and leave the bedroom with them. I go and check and they are in the nightstand again, so she took them and returned them afterwards. I check the living room footage again, and after going to my room, she goes to the kitchen. Kitchen footage shows her taking the birth control pills and putting them in the microwave. She heated them up for about two minutes, then put them back where they belong. I was so f- furious because to me it seems like she was tampering with my birth control in an attempt to get me pregnant. I'm shocked she didn't pull out a pin and start poking holes in the condoms too. When my husband gets home I show him the footage with all of the timestamps. He was reasonably upset too so I told him I want to speak to a lawyer and maybe the cops for breaking and entering because we never gave her a key and I don't know how she got a copy. Husband was with me until I said that. Then he flipped on me and told me I'm being dramatic because he gave her the key, didn't he? I don't even use birth control pills anymore, so who cares? And he accused me of trying to isolate him from his mom. He called me a bitch, packed his bag, and then went to go stay with his friend. It's been three days and he hasn't been back yet. What the f*** do I do? Do I confront mother-in-law? Do I ignore my husband and go to the lawyer slash police anyway? This feels batshit. I don't know why he's so mad at me when she's the one potentially committing crimes here. Edit, thank you for all the kind replies, well wishes, and advice. I'm going to take a break from replying while I figure this thing out, and if anything comes up, I'll update. A few things I have kind of deduced with your help. My husband either A, gave his mother-in-law the key, B, made a copy of his and gave it to her, or C, did neither, and she took his key without permission to clone. It. I'm leaning towards B. I don't think he was in cahoots with her though because he knows about the cameras and he knows I switched from birth control pills to IUD. For those who were asking, we have had repeated conversations over the years about being child free and he always presented a unified front with me. So I don't think he's changed his mind. I think he's just overwhelmed because his mother is crazy. I'm going to call his friend that he's with in the morning since it's getting late. I'll get the message to him that he has to come home and speak with me or I'll just start the process of divorce. I guess I'll let you guys know over the next few days. Thank you for listening to me vent slash talking it out with me this crap is crazy and i really appreciate a safe place to talk about it frowny face update i'm going to try to keep this short there isn't any good news i tried calling my husband for another day before i finally gave up and called his friends to see who he was staying with finally one told me he was staying with his mother I know we're all shocked. It's entirely shocking information. I called mother-in-law's landline and luckily he answered. I told him we had to talk face to face, otherwise I'll just go through with the divorce. He comes by, confesses he was staying with his mom and didn't tell me because he knew I'd be mad. After some pushing, he admitted to making a copy of his key and giving his mom one. He confessed to wanting kids. I asked about why his dating profile way back when said child free, why he put up a united front of no children with me for years only to suddenly change his mind. He said it was because because he saw how lonely his mom is and agrees now that we need kids to liven up holidays, to give her something to do, etc. As in, his sole reason for having kids were for his mother. Not his own, not a change of heart, just because his mom wanted grandbabies. More red flags here. He insisted, though, that he didn't realize his mom would go this far, which I believe because if they were plotting, then he would have told her that I was no longer on birth control and tampering with it would do nothing. He would have also told her not to break in because of the cameras. I packed his shit in the trash bag and kicked him out, told him to go back to mommy and that my divorce lawyer will be in contact soon. At that point, I hadn't changed the locks. I wasn't sure of the legality of it and didn't want to do something that would potentially hurt my chances in court. Besides, I didn't think mother-in-law would show up again because she had her baby boy. Turns out I was wrong. 
wrong. She showed up later knocking and I pretended to not be home as my car was in the garage and she couldn't see it. She knocked for 15 minutes and I debated calling the police, but before I could, she entered the property with her key. I was furious and not going to lie. It gave me a flashback to my attack and I had a panic attack. I was inconsolable and crying. I ended up locking myself in the bathroom. She called me a soul crusher, heartless, and a shitty wife, along with some other colorful insults before finally leaving. It took five hours to calm down. After that, I called my brother. He's staying with me now, he's changed the locks, and he's helped me contact a lawyer and start the divorce. My husband has been doing damage control and got to all friends and family before I could and spun a bullshit lie that I was trying to isolate him from his mother, that I'm making false police reports, etc. It sucks to say a majority believe him because he was their friends before me, but I was able to talk to a few and tell them my side of the story. And that's where I am. About to be divorced, honestly scared and upset, and I'm now doing two therapy sessions a week to try to work on all the progress that have been lost when soon-to-be ex-mother-in-law broke in again. What? Okay, so the most malicious part of all of this on mother-in-law's behalf to me is when she came back. Knowing the history that OP has with not just a burglary, but being burglarized when she was in the home, which by the way, like self-defense legislation is written so that if someone breaks in while you're home, you can reasonably assume that they intend to do you harm if they break in while you're there. So she had every right to defend herself at that point, depending on where she's at, where she lives in. But they beat the shit out of her, took all of her shit. Mother-in-law knows that history, knows it, enters, and confronts her while she's having a freaking panic attack, while she's curled up in a ball in the bathroom, crying inconsolably still, takes that opportunity to just sling insults at her. What kind of heartless, evil, piece of shit person does that and is okay with it? All because she got busted doing something that was heartless and evil and a piece of shit thing to do in the first place. So I guess we can't be that surprised, but wow. And how Hubs in this case just goes running right back to her. My gosh, this woman must be a master manipulator. He was willing to change his worldview on having kids and change his values because his mom was wanted grandchildren. It would give her something to do and liven up the holidays. This boy's broken and we know why. It's because mother-in-law is batshit crazy. Like, ask on one isn't enough for her. Crazy. What is he gonna do when she's gone? He's not going to know what to do. Depending on when that happens in his life, he's probably just going to melt, not be able to function at all, or he's going to keep going the way that she would have wanted him to go, I guess. This is pure evil. Absolute evil on her part. And man, OP in this case here, God, this is a hell of a story. Man, given OP's history with the break-in, like how unlucky to end up with this dude with this mother. But they were married. So she had to have known mom before, apparently just didn't know how maniacal she was, how malicious she could be. So nothing like this had happened before, apparently, except that saying that she hated the fact that they were staunchly child free. She thought that she had finally given up on the idea, but no, hell no. She wanted to break in and sabotage the freaking birth control. By putting it in the microwave, which I guess is a thing. Wow. Candy Thunder and I have the best mother-in-laws in the world. We are extremely fortunate. If you guys don't have a mother-in-law that would do some wacky shit like this, consider yourself lucky. This is all I can do. This is just my face is just stuck like this for days now. Like, what the fuck? OP, yeah. Not the asshole at all here. I know it's not an AITA story. We're still going to do it. Opie, not the asshole at all for reacting the way that you did and for for divorcing and getting as far away from this as possible. This is no bueno. This is a terrible situation. And I can't imagine what Opie at this point feels like having been violated numerous times in such a huge fashion. At this point, like, how are you supposed to trust anyone? How are you supposed to feel safe ever anywhere? This is the kind of shit that can happen whenever you let malicious people into your life. And whenever you have people who you know are capable of this malicious kind of shit, this is why distance is so important. Because if they are close to you, they are able of inflicting this kind of damage. If they're capable of doing evil things to anyone, they're capable of doing evil things to you. Just remember that. And if you encounter someone in your life who is capable and does this kind of stuff to anybody, distance. Distance, distance, distance. Wow. Shit. <laughs> Hey there, it's 
Dusty Thunder with yet another AITA story for you. And this one is, am I the astronaut for wanting my wife to stay up during a road trip and talk to me? It feels like a conversation that Candy Thunder and I have had. However, I never expect her to stay up on road trips with me because the whole carload of people will pass out and I will be on like five hour energy and an energy drink double fist and then just like glued to the road like this. It's my job. I'm the driver. I'm writing this now at the hotel where I'm at because I'm genuinely at a loss of words. I don't think I'm in the wrong, but at the same time, she looks really pissed at me. He's <laughs> directing this Reddit post. She, she mad. She mad bad. My wife, me, and our two-year-old are going on our first family road trip to California. We rotate driving in shifts, but the problem is that when I was driving, my shift fell during the night, so I was feeling really lonely and bored as I was driving. I'm not someone who can be left to his own thoughts very well, and I need people around me. I thrive on energy and excitement. My wife is a bit of the opposite. She's generally fine with being left alone and can sit quietly for hours and hours upon end. The problem is that around 11 p.m., I was driving and my wife and our son were in the back seat. I was feeling isolated, so I shook her awake, but then our son woke up and, well, you can probably guess what happens next. Once he quieted down, my wife began to quietly blow up at me about how much of a dick I was being. I told her that it wasn't fair for her to just sleep like that and it made me feel like a driver. She then said that she doesn't force me to stay awake or engage with her, but I told her that's a cheap blow because we're not the same people. And I kept my mouth shut while she was driving because I know she doesn't like distractions even though it bothered me terribly. So the least she could do is try to stop being selfish and help me keep sane. Despite my perfectly logical answer, she apparently got emotional and then started whisper screaming some shit about how raising one toddler is hard enough and that she didn't know how there was another one in the car who needed his whims catered to at every moment. And at that point, since she got rude, I decided to disengage. Now the whole trip is falling apart and she's making me out to be the bad guy. (laughs) This seems like uh, Mother Gothel and Rapunzel tangled as we know it. She's like, great, now I'm the bad guy, when she clearly is. And he clearly is in this point here. You have to learn how to self-soothe grown ass man and when you're on a road trip when you have a toddler in the back a two-year-old if you risk waking that child at all you're the asshole i'm gonna tell you right now you're the asshole if your own selfish needs end up waking up a child when you are driving in shifts the whole point is like self-sustain and handle the transportation while the other person rests right that's that's how the driving in shifts thing works but because he needs excitement and social engagement to keep himself mentally active he woke her up that was a very selfish thing to do not smart also selfish and in the process woke up the toddler so elevate that to brozo man like listen to some freaking music put one earbud in i know you're not supposed to wear two earbuds while driving because you need to be able to hear the road but but you could wear one or have like have headphones here or have something that you could use to engage yourself or have the music turned down low or every car will let you balance the speakers to have it come out of just the front left one we've done that before on road trips do that if you need to do that you do you don't put the burden on on other people to entertain you while you do your job. So you're telling me that your wife's job is to drive when it's her shift time and it's also her job to entertain you when it's your time to drive. That doesn't seem fair, does it? Also, this, I gave a perfectly logical answer. She apparently got emotional. Why don't you double down on the whole brozo thing, dude? That is never going to go well for you. Never going to go well for you. Also, if you're the one who needs the social engagement and excitement, kind of seems like you're driven by the emotional side of things, too. Despite my perfectly logical answer. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe she's so mad at me. Why? Dude, because you're an asshole. Candy Thunder said here that uh, Reddit voted he was the asshole, and he is. He woke her because he was bored, not because he needed help staying awake, and he called her emotional. Yeah, brozo, you done screwed the pooch on this one. No wonder she mad mad. She has a reason to be mad. You screwed up. How bad did you screw up? Let's find out, Jerry. According to the Ask on Scale, you're at least a three. Uh, at least a two. I don't know that you're a one, because you might just be an idiot. There is a certain level of ignorance that uh, that hedges against being a terrible human, right? It's like a puppy. Puppies can't be evil because they're just so cute and dumb. You might be there. You might be like the puppy version of Ascon 2 because you're just so much of a brozo. Two's going to be my vote for you here. So, um, yeah, your perfectly logical response leads to a perfectly logical trip to Ascon 2, which means that you're the second most severe asshole in this situation that there can be. Definitely apologize to your wife. There was nothing logical about your answer here at all. You were bored like a 
preteen or toddler and needed someone to entertain you. This is the equivalent of your two-year-old, you know, waking up pissed off because your toddler is still stuck in a car seat and crying until someone soothes him or her. You're doing the same thing. You're just doing the grown ass man version when you're supposed to be driving and they're supposed to be resting. So put your big boy pants on, learn to self soothe, learn to do your job here and entertain yourself while not getting distracted without having to negatively affect other people in the vehicle, specifically your wife and your toddler. It's never going to go well, bro. Figure it out. For me, it was music. I could always just have some some energetic music. The only time I will ever down five hour energy is if I am all nighting on road trips and and I am the driver 100% of the time because I'm a terrible passenger. Candy Thunder's a great driver. I'm just a terrible passenger and I just I prefer to be just fried and handling everything. And we'll stop if it's too long of a trip. Like we'll stop to rest if it's if safety demands that. But I'm the driver. It's my thing. I would never be able to rest, let alone sleep in a vehicle where someone else was driving so i just drive and keep myself chemically awake actually i don't know that i've tried podcasts or audiobooks on long road trips i may have to do that because it's something that could keep my attention for a longer amount of time but normally i'm just into more rhythm driven music so i'll do some i've got some really good playlists within my youtube music thing but i go from like jazz to uh, like chill hop stuff and fkj and tom mish are great for road trips fink is really really good for road trips and then i'll get into like jimmy world and that kind of stuff then i'll go back to the metal days and the deaf tones and do that kind of thing all over the place but i need music to like have a rhythm and that rhythm keeps me moving but it'd be interesting to see how podcasts and audiobooks work on road trips